How's it going, folks? We are now live on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. I'm here with Michael himself. Happy Sunday to you, Michael. What's the story? Nice to you, buddy. How are you getting on? Not too bad. It's not too bad. It's strange to go into a game tomorrow, a Monday, with a Celtic game on. Um, yeah, it's nice. That it's actually on TV as well. It's on Sky Sports were actually showing it, which is a funny one. But look, Camille, we shouldn't have been uh, playing this game tomorrow. We should have been playing this during the week. Like, so this should have been our second game after the Rangers game. So it's it's the fact that it's even on. This could have, could have been a third game, nearly like of uh, getting games in hand finished off. You know, hundred percent. I completely agree. We should have should have definitely went not went to the boy, no. played the game straight back onto the track, getting the points yeah. up, not yeah. letting them build momentum. Now at the end of the day, it's just an absolute nightmare. But um, positives is look, we need to get a force win, force win of the calendar year. Yeah, that's got it's got, not going to be an easy game either. It's definitely not going to be an easy game. Definitely not. Now, folks, we have a lot to talk about tonight. We obviously have to talk about the game, talk about the this tested positive player. We don't know who it is at the moment. We're going to talk about transfer targets. We're going to talk about players that could be leaving as well. So throw as much comments in on all the platforms. I really appreciate it. If you can share it, it'd be deadly. And most of all, if you if you can subscribe to the YouTube channel, we're going for five k. If you really help us, all you need to do is go in, click the link. I'm going to put the link on the on the comments on all platforms and just click a subscribe. Whoever has subscribed so far, I really appreciate it. I just want to say thank you very much. But um, it just feels like it's been longer than a week, hasn't it? Much longer than the last time we played we, this, the Oibox one. Yeah, it's been a very, very long week. So it has, um, and constantly seeing the, the clips coming up and then obviously talk about the, the red cards and then the amount that went on in Dubai with Duffy coming home for family reasons or whatever it may be and it's just like so much happened then obviously looking at Darren McGallagher talking about um, how we got lucky that we Duffy wasn't sent off obviously talking about Morelos his the stamp on uh, Frimpong in the first couple of minutes as well there was just nearly too much talk about it, you know and it, was, it made the week go a little bit longer in, in regards to football talk you know Right, let's talk about the boy anyway. So the player that came out today, five hours ago, he came out and said that one of the one of the players tested positive. Yeah. So Paul Medellin said, hope he's not a defender. Hope you're not because we're struggling centre back boys for tomorrow. Julian's still injured. I don't know. Uh, talks that Duffy could play tomorrow. I don't know if Duffy's returned back. I haven't seen much about Duffy. He's been all quiet about Duffy. And um, Beaton's out with the suspension. It's so he's... The thing about tomorrow is like these are after coming back from Dubai, and um, we don't know who's fit. We don't know who's available. Um, there, it, there was not there wasn't much team talk, so we're basically going in blind here tomorrow. We can't even make a prediction for a team tomorrow. If anyone picked up a niggle, if someone's jet too jet lagged, if so, like, we don't even know who got a uh, COVID. So we we, we don't hundred percent know who's available tomorrow. So it's going to be hard to even pick a team tonight. Ah, that would go with the same. I'd go with the predicting team you know if it's wrong tomorrow it's wrong you know it's only it's only a prediction at the end of the day you know um hopefully it's not someone serious that we really need if it's like a, a fringe player or a sub fair enough you know like if it's one of the stars that we've been playing in the last like six or seven games bad news for us if it's higher jesus good luck to us say kiss the game goodbye definitely yeah look like to ask them it's the next couple of months are going to be very, very tough to to even talk about. Like they, even if we won the next what seven or eight games in a row or something, like it's just going to be very, very tough to even like get excited about. You know, because last week was a to me a final nail in the coffin for this season. Like, so we obviously have the cup to look forward to. Like, hopefully, maybe get five cups in a row. But I can't even see that happen to be honest. Well, I was just saying to guys the other night. I said, look at Neil Lennon's his fourth honour was the Scottish Cup in 2011 against Motherwell. He might end these. He's ran a Celtic with a Scottish Cup. It just depends how serious he's going to take the Scottish Cup. Speaking of the Scottish Cup, next round we have is either Falkirk or Abroad away. Now, I remember yeah. playing Abroad in 2012-13. Yeah. Adam Matthew scored a cracker against them, open yeah. Abroad. So um, they were they were marooned to do Abroad too. They're obviously past Dundee between, between Dundee and Aberdeen. That's where they're based. Yeah, but come here, Keith. You know, as much as I do, uh, cup football, anything can happen as well. So I won't be taking anything for granted. Like today, Leeds and the FA Cup, knows a different competition or whatever. I'm not taking that for granted. Like so, like cup football, anything can happen. You saw what happened to us against Clyde, Roy Keane's first game in 2005 or 2006. 
and they be back two 0 that day as well. So and Inverness Cali obviously there's so, so many things that happen in cup games. And plus, you can talk about Ross County as well in the Brett Fred Cup. Some people you can mentioned talk about, today. You talk about Rangers a couple of weeks ago against the Mirren. So anything could happen in the cup, but regards to oh, sorry, one sec, one sec. I'll just keep the comments going, folks. Keep the comments going. Sorry, but well, that's it. The guy from SC Com says, well, it was a Celtic state of mind saying Jack Ross is a better manager than Neil Lennon. Do you agree? Pierce, now taking Neil Lennon is miles ahead of Jack Ross. I'd agree Neil Lennon is miles ahead of Jack Ross. He's been established more. Jack Ross obviously already had the St. Mirren job and the Sunderland job. And yeah. he's, he's in the hip store, what, 19 months now. Hips are far place in the league. They've only won one game in five games. They got beaten by Ross County. They are struggling. They got beaten by they got beaten by Livingston. They scraped the result against St. Mirren. They got beaten by Rangers in Ibrox. They were lucky that day. And um, regards to Dundee, as far as an drew with Dundee United as well. I don't agree. I think Jack Ross is a good manager. I think I would consider Jack Ross for the Celtic job maybe in the near future. This depends who we can look at in the summer because we all know Neil Lennon's not going to be here in the summer. Yeah, no, I I, I can see where um, Rob is coming from. Like I, I have mentioned a couple of times on the on the pods that like I would consider Jack Ross. Um, I think he's done a good job there. Like, but um, the thing you have to say, people say that Neil Lennon's miles ahead of him. Right, Lennon has a lot more experience, but at the same time, he's all, always had a budget compared to something that Jack Ross didn't have. And so he's like, our our budget. Like any manager should be able to walk in and get better results. Than a than Jack Ross teams, so it comes down to that no matter what. Like people have said for years, anyone can walk into Celtic and we're gonna get something with their manage the team with their slippers on. It's, the, but it's obviously not like that anymore now. But I don't oh, Stephanie just, hasn't been. Last the plot, like wish I wish it was like that this season instead of having this cloud. <laughs> you know, yeah, just, no, look, we, we, we we took things for granted. That's what we did. So you're looking at what David Turnbull had it. The t- the two Israeli boys had it. Um, Edward had a Christy was close contact and when it comes to the case whoever does have it this player that's some of the boys might, I might appear up on them on their symptoms you know it takes 10 days for this virus to pop up as they say um, it could put the game at jeopardy it depends how many it depends if they do a test and run a, run a test on tomorrow more players come back well apparently all the other players have tested negative already you never know. But, look, uh, but, but Michael's out to making a great point there as well. Like You saw what uh, Aston Villa had to do the other day against Liverpool. They had to put another 12s team out nearly against them. So it's it, it could be the exact same situation here. Now, just on the Dubai trip, right? First of all, you shouldn't have, uh, shouldn't have ever went, right? No matter what form you're in. You look back to the very start of this season, ball and goalie. We should have been taking absolute uh, inspiration of that and say, why are we going leaving the country when a... Uh, we had this situation already at the start of the season when our season looked in turmoil straight away from this. And probably, listen, we could have never uh, re- recovered from this either. But at the same time as well, the, the amount of sacrifices people are making and then you see a, a football team travelling to Wigan Dubai. It's, I, I was ashamed when they, I saw him getting the play and that should have been cancelled straight away. And you know, I was, you know, I was laughing when Kennedy was saying in his press conference, he was like, well, we've done some training drills that we won't be able to do in Scotland because of the weather was good. But why well, are you going? What... Why are you doing so, uh, heat training in the in the start of January when you're up in the Highlands? It's going to be snow up there for the most of the month. Why? What's the what's heat training going to do for you? It's absolutely it's absolutely bonkers. Like to be honest with you, I just the way I look at it is I hope it's it benefits us in the long term. And obviously this this week or the next two weeks, obviously losing a player or could perhaps more players uh, it could be a disaster for us. If we uh, end up playing field in a uh, youth team tomorrow, it's nothing more than we deserve. Yeah, and Hibs will have a chance because Hibs need to get towards spot this. Like, and obviously Aberdeen losing today against Rangers. Hibs are still in the run for towards spot. They can be going to us then before we know it. Exactly. And we don't want that. You know, we want to be winning every game as it comes. As I said, every game should be a cup final for us. Um, I think the Scottish government need to need to really look at Celtic and look at any team that goes that leaves the leaves for no particular reason. It's not that important it's just to go training. It was, it was a training procedure. It wasn't a case that they were going for a funeral or someone was sick, you know. If you want to go and do a bit of heat training, get heaters in they've said they've got a great academy length then they've got indoor pitches there and everything as well. 
bring heaters in there. Bring sun looking uh, beds in there if you want. Just bring, bring, make the heat as it is in Dubai and play in the plastic pitches. It's not hard, that hard to do. Like they should never have went. Like I, I don't understand why the, the trip was even planned. Like Rangers pull their straight, their straight away. They all usually go right. But like when you, I, I come back, come back to the ball and goalie point. This was absolute like nearly um, worldwide news about it at one stage. Everybody was talking about it, and Celtic still left the country after what he did on his own. I know it was it was sanctioned by the, the club and everything. Stat- statements yet again. That's not statements again. It's a statement FC. Like they should have came out and defended it. They said, "Oh look, we had it. We had a plan." As they said, we had a plan. So it was approved in November. But things have changed a lot since November. The cases have gone up by four times the amount. The deaths have gone up as well. Absolutely yeah. shocking. You know, the UK went into their, uh, their, their. They broke their records there just two days ago. Mm. Absolutely. Unbelievable. And um, Carmel says null and void. It could happen. You never know. Um, as far as I know, was null and void has to be seventy percent. Um, I, I, we we don't know who's in the youth team. Whatever, like, like you never know. Uh, Weed and Belly might get his first run out as well. Like so. This is another point as well. St- thanks very much, Stephen. Watching from Twitter. Um, what example are Celtic shown to the fans? To be honest with you, I feel like fans are getting robbed blind with them going to the boy. You know, they're not. They're not coming out with, they're not interacting with the fans like regards to self literally being on the doors of Celtic way, saying or the reception saying, Look at this is what's gone wrong with the club, we're gonna fix this. AGM's a shambles. They come out with these statements, the team were literally nineteen points behind. We're out of Europe. Twenty two. Twenty two. We're out, well, twenty two points behind now. Well, I don't hopefully win this game tomorrow. Um like twenty like plus twenty points, that hurts. A horse. I know people are saying, I know people are watching tonight and saying, "Ah, Keith, we can come back. We can come back." <sighs> I challenged them. I, I asked them to challenge me in that and say, "Like, uh, we, we can turn this around." I said, I, "If if you, I, if whoever wants to say we can turn this around, I'll put any money. Anybody here wants to make a comment right now and say you want to bet bet me any money, I will do it right now. Say that we will not turn the season around. We will not win this league. If we win the league, I'll get Neil Lennon on my chest. I told you this. I will. I'll get Neil Lennon on my chest." If, if even if he's not the manager, which he will be the manager then to the end of the season, they're not going to make a change. If he made a chance to make a change, it would have been six weeks ago. When no, but just on that point there, uh, Stevens after making there, he's he's bang on the money. So he is about uh, the, the the respect of the, the club showing to the fans, like all the season books sold again this year for and to get the virtual tickets to haul at the same price that cost a normal season ticket. And all that money basically he spent was a uh, for a plane ticket for all the boys to go to Dubai, probably a five star hotel, uh, whatever meals they want, probably a few beers. There was there was pictures of it, like the likes of Scott Brown interacting with the with fans and stuff like that. It's an absolute fucking disgrace. Like, you know, people are getting angry with Lenny and Bruni at the pill, having a drink and having a laugh. You know, what else are you meant to do when you fly to the boy? Well, how, how could you, you actually it, 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 for a person that wears that jersey with pride how could you be uh, sitting around the pool having a beer and like um, especially after the result we had last Saturday knowing that 10 in a row was gone like, like, fair enough we, they need a bit of team bonding the whole lot whatever but geez lads like, you just do it on the pitch like do it on the, put, <sighs> put your blood and sweat into the, the, the train sorry Steve <laughs> he, he, you're guaranteed he's gonna course. I do apologise, folks. If anyone I'll has try, it, I'll, I'll, I'll call it, I'll call it in. Yeah, we need we need to we need to put this on plus eighteen at this rate. Right. Um, but um, it's, yeah, it's, I just it's hard. It's hard when you're agitated about it. Though. But the thing is that I feel like the fans are being robbed this season, completely robbed, and it's not it's not a weight case that Lawwell's coming out and saying, "Look, we've got it wrong." He bank here himself, Desmond, an absolute corruption AGM. You know, corruption AGM. I don't think that's going to spend a penny in this window. I really believe they won't spend a penny. I think we're going to see whatever they sell, they're going to try buy a player. Probably a total of that value. What's the point? What is the point? Like, for example, if you get 10 million from the champ, I know people might laugh and say 10 million from the champ, that's that's bonkers. But, like, he was right at 15 million, 16 million at one point. You know, I know he hasn't been playing. But the likes of, it was West Ham were looking at him. West Brom, West, West Brom yeah. talks that someone in Spain wants him as well. I want him to go. You know, he was what three years. He's, that was he's just made t- taking up space in the bench now at the moment. So he is, and he's he's not putting his he, like when he came to us, 
he was decent, like, but even still, he had a dip in form, he was lazy. Then he came back into a bit of form when Lennon called him out when Lennon returned, and then he just dipped again, like, so. Um, the other one you mentioned, Eddie was 40 million valued at the start of the season, and now I, I wouldn't even be half surprised if he got 14 from. But they see the difference, the difference with Paul, Paul, the difference with Rogers and Lennon is we were winning, we were, we were doing well with Rogers. You know, and we, as you, we, you said, the start the, of the season where uh, Rogers, there's a lot more, there's a lot more training going on as well. P- professional attitude with Rogers, really professional attitude, serious manager. So that was the difference between Rogers and Lennon. You know, I think I just think Lennon feels like he's done at Celtic. He, he gets away with more, and that's my honest opinion. I think Lennon feels like he has, he, he has this authority that he. So that's that's my only opinion. Um, they, 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 under Rogers, they deserved a few beers. They they were they were working for Rogers. They were playing for Rogers. They were getting results that we uh, wouldn't even expect it ever. But uh, Lennon now is just different story altogether. Yeah, I just think that Lennon, like since April, hasn't been himself. You know, hasn't been himself. We're starting to get glimpses of Lennon in the last six or seven weeks. I rock to show glimpses of it. He, Obviously, the Bobby Madden smash up, you know, you, you just need to get on from, you know, you don't want to be going on like a so called Premier League manager moaning about the ref. We don't need that show, you know, we don't yeah. need that show. And you know, funny enough, I was actually came up today on my YouTube, I don't know how it came up on my YouTube when um, Paddy McCart was taken down against Inverness and he didn't give the penalty and we lost 3 2. And you see him kicking yeah. the, the puddle, absolutely yeah. mental. But he was right because we lost the title to that, that stupid game. Yeah, no, it, it's it's typical like them, them games against like. But Lennon was uh, he was fiery back then, but now he's just returned as a yes man. I think. Well, regardless of the departures, people want to write down who do you think or type down who do you think will go. I there's talks of um, Benkovic. We'll talk about Philippe Benkovic. He's, he's, for... he's gone to um, he's, he's gone to Belgium, I think. Or is that? Uh, is it yeah, he's meant. He's meant to be Leicester's sister club. This meant to be so. Um, no, no, he's yeah. gone. He's gone on loan already. I think so. He's. There was talk. Look, I read it in an article. Was a day I was saying that he's like, he's set to go. I don't know if it's, it hasn't has it agreed yet. It's but, standard, um, standard, standard Liège. I think he's gone to. It, 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 La- quote, 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 quote me if I'm wrong on that. Looks so. Hmm. Benchovic. People are saying the, like, he's only played ten games since he left Celtic in two and a, two and a half years. He was decent when he was with us. Like he, he, he looked solid. But then he got the bad injury. Then and he was just a bit more or less sent back. But again, he was playing under Rogers, wasn't he? Like, what was he playing under Len? He was playing under Rogers. He didn't really play much under Len. I think he played like five games under Len. Yeah, like but he had that bad injury for the rest of the season. Like so, um, like but when he was playing, like he was he looked solid and his debut goal was against Hearts. Yeah, no, I, I was. We, I think we tried. We tried to sign him as well, but he, obviously we didn't. Didn't keep him as well. So, but like that's just typical Celtic. They won't. They wanted. The they wanted nine million from my father. I remember eight to nine million, and Celtic won. Yeah. but we spent it on Edward. We did instead, which yeah. Paid back. I, remember, I remember that. Right, I when they wouldn't pay him. Once that fee came up, it was like, nah, forget about it. Yeah. Um. Someone's asked me about Duffy. What do you think? Do you think Duffy will leave? He's linked with Nottingham Forest. Uh, look, I, I still love the guy. Um, I obviously with the with the Irish thing, whatever as well, the Irish connection. I I won't hate the guy, but I, I don't think he has uh, a future at Celtic. He he hasn't performed since he came up. Hasn't adapted to life up here. So I I think thanks very much, Shane. Uh, you gave it a go. It didn't work, but I think it's time to. Cut your losses here on this one, so one of the worst signings ever happened. It wouldn't be it'd be up there because the amount of hype about it as well. He'd be like, would it be you could, you could put him in there with a few players that we had, like like say Janino and all that when he signed, he was big hype about him. Uh Freddie Youngberg, obviously it's another one that, oh. that was a big hype about. I remember that one. Uh, look, there's a few there's a lot of uh, big hype players that came to Celtic um and they, Probably, they Henry Henri, oh, was it was Henri Camera or Titty Camera? It's one. Henri, uh, Titty Camera is Liverpool. Henri Camera is yeah. really yeah. good. No, I remember seeing him a lot of times. He was the laziest man I ever seen in a Celtic jersey. Well, apart from Van der Snow or a uh, some doy, some doy, bro, isn't he? Gosh, look, that's one thing I always hate in a Celtic jersey. Like we got some good players in that season. Like these are my boys that got to the World Cup semi-finals, the World Cup finals. Like Janine, you know, World Cup final. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I'm really can't it. Woke up you have to realise that when we, did, when we did sign them, though, they were nearly washed up like so. Suppose, you know. The old bargain department, you know. Um, Edward, do you think Edward will go in this window? Um, I don't know if it'll go in this window. If it'll, if he does go, it'll be last day, I say. I, but if, he, if there's links with it, I'd rather see him gone early because the last thing we need is another window where his future is uncertain and it's getting there's to been, him. There's been links the last two weeks that he's meant to be AC Milan already pushing the 25 million. From like, I would take 25 million. Uh, I, 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 I take hand and all and I pack his bags and send them off. Take the 25 million, buy a striker for about 7 8 million. Get someone, get, he gets, he gets someone for 7 to 8 million. Um, I'm not uh, concerned about holding on to players anymore. In, in would, this you think, like, would you think if, say, for example, Edward wants to go, a Yeti and Griff up front would it work? Uh, Griffiths will work. A Yeti still hasn't uh, shown up. Mikey Johnson probably has show, would show a bit more calibre. He's coming through. He's a young, young player. Um, like The only players that I'd be concerned about keeping most at the moment, obviously we will keep them because they're only recently signed, would be Turnbull, Sorrow. I think they're the future of the club in, the, in centre mid. Keeper, obviously, um, Forrester came out the other day and said he's going nowhere regardless. Um, he's happy enough where he is and he's put the, that, that to bed straight away. Um, Defence-wise... I think Ayer is probably the only one I want to keep, but I, I can see him gone at the end of the season as well. Um, we, we was only talking to me dad about this the other day, and obviously the fullback situation, we've never actually replaced Tierney, and obviously the bigger one that we shouldn't have done was let go of uh, Lustig. We should have kept Lustig for the season as well. Oh, there's a couple of, there's a couple of teams in for Musa Dembele now. I know West Ham are in the mix. Atletico Madrid are in for him as well. I'd like to see him go Atletico Madrid. I know Diego Costa's on his way out. Yeah, he's, his contract was uh, done, whatever. But I thought you said Moussa Dembele could come back to Celtic. He's, uh, he's too good to play Celtic for a long time. Ah, he's, but he's a legend. Like, literally came back the season. Was it the end of that season when he left? When he went to Leon, he came back the end of that season for the, the Hearts game, the title, title celebration on the pitch. God's medal. What a man, what a man, big moose. Sort of, I don't think sort of, he got a medal. I don't think uh, he got a no, medal. He, he played enough games he got the medal. He should have got a medal. Look at Marvin Comper. I was just about to say, Marvin Comper didn't even, I think what, he played one game against Brecon and then that was it. Right, um, I'm going to go through the comments, folks. I'm not forgetting about Just By the way, if you don't have us on YouTube, subscribe on YouTube. I'm going to put the link again. There is there. We're going for 5K. I know he's, I know he's watching the three platforms. Um, Gaz... Scotland have been just added, so you have to self isolate to the tour to, from the tour <laughs> to January. That's that's what's screwed tomorrow, then. I don't know. It's like obviously, this is going could be a last minute job. The game could be called off. You know, the last um, time. So if the Utes didn't go, then they'll have to play. They have to play the Utes. They have to play the reserves. If they didn't go, we'll have to play them tomorrow. Young Welsh, I don't know. I don't think he was in the boy. Anthony Wilson was in the way. But to keep as I said, like um, we don't even know about a team tomorrow because we don't even know who went. We don't know who's a. Uh, Going to be playing. We don't know who's available to play. We don't know if uh, the youth went. We don't know if the reserves went. So if the, if the, if guys is after saying that there, them players will not be able to play tomorrow because the only right back there what on Friday was it? Right back. I think it was Saturday morning. You're right back. So they won't be, be able to play. They, they can't play tomorrow. Right, Keith. Are you going to get Lenny's name or his face tattooed? I'll get his face. I will. I'll get his face. I'll get G. I'll get GBNL if we win the league. God bless Neil Lennon. I remember someone said to me, What's GBNL? I was like, Are oh, you fucking for real? Like, <laughs> you know, sorry about the language, folks. I'll get into it as well. 10 players to isolate. <laughs> we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Is it, is as well, they get, if the first team isolated tomorrow, we probably get the, the youths probably do a better job anyway. What do you think of that? Is, is there a possibility Hibs could get points? I think with the fix, with the calendar, I think they'll, they could appeal it. Um, they could have a good case because, um, especially the way Celtic did it, especially the way they went to Dubai, they have a very now the SFA cleared it though. That's the only other thing. So we they, Celtic have a case there that the case or that the SFA cleared it, let, us, let them go, and they said they've no reason to uh, investigate no matter what Nicholas Sturgeon says. So, you know what Celtic are gonna come out and say we were in a bubble, we were in the hotel. Like it's not really a bubble if you. Strangers in the hotel, like you know, Dubai has been open for a lot of countries during this pandemic. You've seen Scottish people going, you've seen 
a lot of different nationalities going to the ball, you know. And it's a well, case that at the same time, never mind um, that they that they were uh, showing our own fans up. They were showing, they're sticking the two fingers up to the whole league and the in their own country. I think the way they did it, like just even the people that are isolating, they uh, sacrificing so much. The league is uh, in turmoil financially. Clubs might not even be able to survive after this crisis. I said they're spending money going to Dubai. Spending a lot of the season taking money that the fans are getting paradise to. That's what I said. Pass the paradise. Absolute shambles. Absolute shambles. Um, let me well, see we could, here. Talk, we, could, we, could, we could talk about that all night, whatever. But the fact of the matter is, everyone agrees they shouldn't have went. So. Right. Damien Duff left the Ireland fault the other day. Do you know why the reason why he left the Ireland fault? It was to do with the way the, the video investigation was done about the, in, the English build up video. He wasn't happy with the way FEI dealt with it, apparently. Yeah, because the FEI came out with an apology and he said, We don't need to apology. Why should we have an apology? We wanted to get the boys rolled up, show them what, what England has done to Ireland, yeah. you know? It, an absolute shambles. Um, Duff, we all, we have, we've put the finger on this for a long time since the last three months. Even when he left Celtic, it was going to be all downhill. We needed to get someone to replace Duff. Okay. Yeah, no, I said on uh, on Gaz's page there the other night, uh, the Celtic FC appreciation page, um, that it was it was a big hold fill. There was it was never filled, and it just shows the the actual the, the the push he had in the team. Like he obviously had a big connection with the players, and see when Lennon come back halfway through his first season, well, sorry, his first season return, like after Rogers uh, walked away, Duff was with him. And there was the performances were there. Duff stay up to the last season. Performances were there. You pr- you promote Duff gone, there and then. Yeah, as you soon as he's gone, Duff. he obviously has something. But I, I can't see him coming back. I think he will stay at home, and he might go to the Shamrock Rovers. Someone said to me, um, it was actually Michael Brown said it to me the other night. He goes, "Would you put a bet on Duff to take the Celtic job? No, nope. next season. I don't think he'll leave. I don't think he will come back to Celtic." I think he said a couple of times. He said a couple of times, well, like uh, traveling over and back to his family as well was was getting him. So I think he's a bit of a homeboard. But his man was taking care of his finances for a long time, even when he was at Chelsea. You know? Yeah, but, see, but he was away a long time as well. And then when when, when he was retired, he came back and played with Shamrock Rovers for half a season, and I like, think he played that for free as well. But he, he was Australian as well. Home. He was, but he was happy to be home. He said he's been on the road too long. I, I think that's why he probably took the Irish job hand and hand and all. Never even considered taking the, uh, the Celtic job. So I'm disappointed in Celtic this season on and off the park. They have dimble time to cancel that. They, they had, had time, time to cancel. To um, they could yeah. have cancelled the the day before. They didn't even have to. They could have. They couldn't. Even, they could have even went to the airport and said, "Lads, we're cancelling the trip." They could have done it then. They could have done any time. They could have gone onto the plane and walked off the plane before they even took I off. I wonder if any. I wonder if any players were like thinking, second thinking, like, "Oh, Jesus, this is dodgy going over." Well. I don't know if a, if a gun was put to their head, like that's the only way they could have went. But like I, I think if they if any any savvy about you and you're thinking about your own family, um, then you, you could have had a case not to go. Definitely. So, well, it was it wasn't be, if you were travelling for international football duty. You're um, travelling for a holiday, basically. It'd be interesting what to see what the storage says tomorrow. I'm sure storage will say something about it. As I said at the start of this, Keith, um, it's not not no more than static deserve if they uh, if they are uh, punished. Hmm, definitely. Um, the club did that trip for two reasons: one, because he don't care about the ten, and the fans be number two because he didn't think the voice didn't matter to them. He's got he's got a good point. He's got a good point. Hopefully, they come back and bounce back. That's if they don't bounce back, if we we get point points stock tomorrow, there's gonna be absolute motor. You know, like it's just. They should have really taught into this. I know they keep saying we did. They had four weeks of pre-up, but things have changed a lot in four weeks. A lot. If we might start in eleven for tomorrow, if this game goes ahead, because people are past us. What do you think about tomorrow? I think it's going to be two 0 tomorrow to Celtic. Regardless, well, who, it depends we, on who's we, actually we don't, tested. Well, that's to me. We don't know who, but we don't even know if our players can play. That's the other thing we have to think about. We don't even know if we have a team to play. Right, let's go with the scenario the game's on tomorrow because it's the best way to think at the moment because if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Um, you know Sky Sports are going to milk it to get this game on tomorrow. Oh, because Chris they... Boyd is going to be absolutely licking his lips tomorrow. He's going to be hands going. Goes, and I could say he has like a, a, a Bible worth of uh, things to say tomorrow about Celtic. Look what look what happened when Balangoli went to Spain and That's you're meant to play, 
went to play the Saint Marin Saint play went to play Saint Marin on the Wednesday, and we got the we got we got the fixture rearranged, and they absolutely threw us under the bus. They won't put on telly. Yeah, no, but at, at the same time as well, like as I said, this is third time I'm saying this now. Ball and goalie uh, caused us a lot of trouble at the start of the season. we going to Spain, and Celtic didn't cancel that trip to the day. They basically just did the exact same thing that he did. Mm-hmm. And, and and the cases are even worse now at the moment. Right, let's see. There's a comment here from Roberto. The SF the SFA and Scottish government have gave the okay for the trip. Just stop moaning this season has been the been poison. It's hard not to moan. It's it's fairly hard not to moan about this, to be honest. You know, I think a lot of people are annoyed you. You go onto Twitter and you can see the frustration. You know, there's a lot of awful things being said, but no, look, he's got he, Robertson entitled to his opinion there, and I, I, I back him up there. I, I, um, the SFA uh, did clear the trip. Okay, they said that they've no reason to investigate, but um, the club taking like look at the, the way the season's gone. Look at the way all the fans are doing, like uh, sacrifice and uh, they gave all the money for season tickets. Just don't don't make a bad example. But that's the way the, the, the boy trip has looked. It was a bad example. They're set a bad example for, for fans and people around the, the country as well. If they can go, why can't we go? It's basically that there, like so. Ali McGlinchey, if you're top of the league, not one Celtic opponent will be complaining about the Dubai trip. I still think with the with the positive case today, I think we will still be on them all. I think Ali's got a good point there on that one, okay. But I don't think uh, that I think, I think he's wrong saying that nobody be giving it. I'd say there'll be a lot of people saying we shouldn't be there. Like, look, Rangers there at top of the league, they go every year as well, and they cancel their trip. I think it. It just uh, I'd be against them going like so, even if we were fifty points clear. It's it's it's, it's easy for me to say that now, like obviously because uh, we're behind and it, it's it's done and I'm moaning about it now, but I still think I'd be uh, against it, even if we if the the tables are turned. Someone said about the keepers. What about the keepers? If the fourth team have to isolate, well, what well, Hazard, Bain, Barkas, um. Dillon's on loan, isn't he? Dillon's on loan at Ross County, isn't he? Uh, I think so, yeah. But again, if you're asking about trying to pick a team for tomorrow about with youth players or reserve players, um, I, cu- I couldn't give you any answers. Right, I'm going to go for me to affect this, all this, all these comments coming through for a second. Hazard and goal, Jeremy Fingpong on the right back, Laxaw left back. I'm going to go with Oyer. Um, Al Hamid, because I don't think I don't know what the crack is with Duffy. There's Duff, people are saying Duffy's available to play, but I'm gonna go with Al Hamid. Al Hamid in there, you get you stay with Sorrow, you stay with McGregor, you stay with Tormbull, you don't move them. Them three stay where they are. Christie plays, so it's a diamond. You play Edward and you play Griff. That's if they're available. Yeah, the, I think the only one that I uh, disagree with there is a. Um, Sorry, two that changes I make to that I put Barkas and Nets. I didn't think he did a whole lot of wrong against Rangers. Uh, I keep him there if he's in good form. And I put uh, I give Taylor a run because Laxalt was a little bit hit and miss there last week as well. He's been hit and miss the last couple of games. I put Taylor in. Hasn't been confirmed yet. Oasis Aaron hasn't been confirmed. Looks like it's still on at the moment. Only one positive case. Um, obviously the Scottish authority is saying that anyone from the from the tour of January. The boy have to self isolate, so I don't know if Celtic are going to get away with it because it's Celtic. You know, are they going to do the protocol like every human being has to be follow the protocol? That's living in Scotland if they travel outside the country from go to these countries. I don't know what's going to happen. You know, they got the approval by the SFA, they got approval by the the officials of Scotland, but things have changed, as I said. Um, someone said no no quarantine for the boy or friends. They're just a test. It's all. I don't know what to believe until I go on go off it. Um, someone said Al Hamid not a chance, so you won't go by Al Hamid centre back. Uh, you could, if but if Duffy's not there, beat on suspend. The Julian's injured. Who else do you put in? Uh, well, maybe may, may, may uh, a Welsh, Welsh or um, Henderson. No, Henderson. Henderson can play centre back. What about Robson? I don't know. If Ralston, I don't think he's away. I don't think he's back for full fitness yet, is he? Yeah. Sorry for a sec, folks. Two seconds. Yeah, the dog. The dog and his water. Jesus. Typical thing. 
Typical. Um, yeah, give no, Welsh it, a shot. Uh, yeah, probably give Welsh. But like again, that's if he's there or not. So. Yeah. The dog's Welsh is ah, oh, he's, he's middle enough, folks. So I do apologise. <laughs> Ah, it's a bit of a night leading to it. Go on. Um, what? You, so you think you'd actually start back us? Yeah, he, he was put in nets for the last two games for a reason, and I don't think he made any uh, big problems there last week. Obviously, the goal uh, was nothing that you could do about it. It was a deflection within, not, not his problem. But other than that, he, he looked um, comfortable enough. There's a few dodgy moments, whatever, but again, I think that was just... He, he needs his confidence to be built. If you want to spend five million on a keeper, you might as well use him. And he's been decent enough the last two games. So if this game's off tomorrow, if if it comes to the case, it's off. It, we're looking at um, we're looking at five games we have to play because Rain, Rangers <laughs> are obviously they have a weekend off in the Bet Fred Cup semi final because the the team that they were meant to be playing are playing in the semi final. So we could be potentially five games at the end of this month. We have to put in this, the calendar, get the source. It's it's mad to think, isn't it? And so I'm saying, like people have this belief, you know, with these five games. You got to take every game to come. You, you don't. The opposition are not rolling over the season. You know, teams are not rolling over the Celtic. You know, it's nope. it's when the fans are there, when they're pushing them on. Yeah, it's a different level. But people, the the fans, the teams are not rolling over as they were. You know, our best game was Dundee United you know, this season. Dundee United. You know, yeah. I would have said Hibs three 0 at home. Now Dundee United, you know, I talked about. I just thought that the press now them, the walk between Sorrow and McGregor. And Tumble, Tumble, congratulations to David Tumble getting the player of the month as well. Well, he did, he did deserve it, in fairness. So it was put between him and Sorrow, but Tumble played obviously more games and he was he, he looked he looked sharp now. Obviously, I think uh, Tumble's going to be a great addition to especially the Scottish national team next year um, in the Euros. He's he's going to be class. I hope hopefully he gets the call up to the Scottish team next year. Hopefully, and um, hopefully with James, he come back in a few weeks' time. James is obviously going to. We're coming back from injury for a long time. You don't know what kind of player he's going to be. Mm. Yeah. So let me see. What's this? Honestly, you ain't you ain't the big team. Everything are bigger than Celtic. One scouse has torn up in Scotland. Oh, would you get a rip grip to yourself? Would you? When did when did, Ever- when did Everton win a European Cup? Come back to me then. When was the when if Everton Everton are a big team? When was when was the last time Everton won the Premier League? Well, last time Everton actually won a trophy. Look, leave him alone. He's, he's just the, the keyboard warriors are obviously out. Leave him alone. We're all tied to our opinion, but you're on the wrong park. You're on the wrong podcast. He, 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 he caught. He was, he was fishing there, and he caught you good there, Keith. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, they are. They're a club. They're a big enough club, but they're not bigger than Celtic. Like, yes, they're getting a stadium, getting done on Albert Dock, but. Yeah, it took them what, a good amount of investors. You know, Kenry's screwed them over for many years, so I, I don't agree with them there on that one. Sure. <laughs> you don't want to get people saying whatever they want. Like so. Yeah. If they were a big enough club, David Moyes would have won silver with them when he was so called the Messiah. So, yeah. And let me see. Going through these comments again. Could Brown do a job at centre back? I'm not. I just wouldn't say it's. I wouldn't be against it. I wouldn't say it's not a bad idea, Paul. Mm hmm. It's gonna say to you, regards to Scott Brown, I put it up there yesterday. Would you give Scott Brown a contract extension? His contract's up at the end of the season. Uh, it's, it's to be honest, it's gonna be up to him whether he decides like the club will just turn around, Scott, do you want another year? And if he says yes, they'll give it to him straight away. I wouldn't give him a I wouldn't give him a player capacity role. I wouldn't I, I if fair enough I did change your mind last week and I said I would maybe play maybe three or four games, perhaps, but regards to it. I'd put, put Bruni in, you know, get rid of Strack and bring Bruni in, you know, Strack and it's done nothing but lap. We, we yes. seem to have this conversation about Brown every January. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I just want to say good night to good night to Mitchell. Take care of yourself. You're on the you're on the wrong stream anyway. Oh, he's, he's, get, he's getting at me, was he? Ah uh, no, it's just Graham Norton here. You know him, and he's he's English. English. Like it's two different leagues, two different clubs. Hmm. Uh, well, I don't know what's up with him anyway. Leave him to it. You know, <laughs> I done I done my favour anyway. Leave him to it. Um, Bruni coaching role. Teas no, we're, all, we're all expecting him to eventually be on the the touchline of Celtic. So, but God knows when it's going to be. Like, he, like to be honest. 
I, I'm just at the stage, and especially after the last week, I don't know what uh, I can say about Celtic anymore. Like, it's just you don't know what the club's just like a different club at the moment. The, the, the backroom staff, the management, the players, obviously, the fans aren't like the fans are still the same. Like, but like, there's obviously a, a new element of fans coming through. As I said, people are entitled to their opinions and everything, but there's a lot of them, uh, there's a lot of them just very, very, um. <sighs> They're not the fans that we had in Seville in 2003. Like um, for like the the loyal fans, the the ones that don't cause any problems. Now we seem to have an element that's there since for over the last 20 years. You know, 100. Regards, like as I said, these are the fans are reliant to see Celtic play on a week weekend basis to keep them going through this tough time. And by them going to the boy and thinking it's all right, let's go for a training training session yeah. for a week yeah no i think that's uh, sticking two fingers up to, to the the fans the league and to a lot of people that are sacrificing things I, i'm sorry but i just don't agree with it one bit like he said you're going to see a massive change in the next six months you're going to see the likes of players move on rogers will move on bruni p- perhaps might be leaving the, the player set up could go for a coaching role um G- i think julian might go oyer will be gone the champ will be gone bain might go out I look, I made, I made I made a comment last week. I said we, we could be look we could be looking at rebuilding again next year. We could be looking at three years without a Scottish title. I'm not going and I still stand by that because the way we are at the minute, we are going to be losing players. We're going to be selling them for hopefully a couple of quid, and we're going to um, just be we're just going to be like um, rebuilding. It's going to be a new project, but I think we need a good manager in like so. That's as, as we go back to this argument. Say you can say. Can you sell it to a good manager? What is a good manager? What is what is a good manager for Celtic? Like we look at we looking at a checkbook and looking saying, right, Rafa Benitez, is he gonna willing to take three years of Celtic? Well you, uh, the only reason we, we got Rogers because Rogers made demands and got them. And that's what the next manager has to do. He it basically yeah, because the, the, club, the club are man are, are handing the backroom staff, the club are deciding who well, what, what players they want to go, and the manager isn't getting much of a say. The manager, next manager has to come in and say, I am controlling the team, I am controlling my backroom staff. And if John Kennedy's uh, on the back on the touchline, uh, then I will not be your uh, manager, basically. If I, I don't want him, you can give him to your U team, whatever. You just basically have to like um, get a manager that's going to make all the demands that Rogers did and get us back to where we, we should be. Um, no, Stephen's right there with Lennon. He said he won't go onto the board, tell him to go. But I think Lennon will probably walk himself. He won't. He won't leave. He won't leave. And to be honest with you, I think he's Lennon's come to the case where he's stubborn. He thinks that he has got a good bit of winning mentality. That he'll stay there. You know, it's not. It hasn't been good enough this season in all aspects. You know, mm. the only re- we were all happy a couple of weeks ago. Well, a month ago because we won a cup from last season. Yes, it is a story cup. Fair enough. But this season, domestically, has been poor. Really poor. Mm. No would imagine that would have been this bad. You know, and people are saying. Rangers are this miles ahead because if we shot ourselves in the foot and we keep shooting ourselves in the foot, we went into this year, gone to the boy, going for a training regime, which come back could come back stronger, but already it's been a damper because we have a player tested positive. More tests could come through. Someone said that could be three players of the, the background staff as well that could be tested positive. I don't know if that's true or not. Look, we'll see. We all we can do is wait and see what happens tomorrow morning. Like if we see if the game goes ahead, or if we have a team, or if, we're, if players are allowed. Like so. But um, Maloney and, and Kennedy is a combo. It's like, Kennedy he shouldn't be on the touchline anymore. Uh, Joe, I'm sorry, he, he has to go. He, he's a problem with that touchline. Would you take Declan Gallagher from Motherwell? That's me, Elfle as well, Compton. So it is. <laughs> uh, Would you take? Um, probably. But again, like it's gonna be hard to pick a manager at the moment. Like for the simple reason, as we said, like the majority like, of the time, the club. Lens going to be there to the end. Lens going to be there to the end of the season, right? Because no manager going to come in and oversee the last ten in a row. Simple as that, right? Um, even if they know, even if the fans agree that no manager is going to turn around, it's simple as that. It's just going to be gone, right? But a manager that comes in next season it has to be in from the the first day after the league ends, and has to set down his plan. This is what I want. This this is my European plan, whether it most likely be Europa League. Well, but we have a Champions League qualifier, obviously. So, um, but then we'll say, oh, this is me back on staff. We want 
this is me uh, direction of the club. These are the players I want. These are the players I want out, and these are the players that I want to go after. There so we got. We're, so we're, we're getting. We're getting away with it. But it looks like comments. Yeah, it does look like we're getting away with it. Um, just as I said, I I think it's a case where I don't know if the club are saying, "Look, forget about the fans." I think in which they I think they've been thinking like that since the Ross County, the Ross County results. They don't care what the fans have have their opinion, no. and it's gonna hit. It's gonna kick them in the teeth when we're yeah, now comes up. The, the next season, if there's still no fans there back in stadiums, there's going to be a lot of people revoking their season tickets. Well, you know, it's going to they'll see a lot of people uh, not not buying them. Remember Ronnie's fourth season, and you had the Lisbon line stand on the top of the Lisbon line stand. You had the big banner. Yep. It's going to be. I think it's going to be top tier. Well, you know, well now, a good bit of that. You have to think of a, a, another reason why that was happening when Ronnie was there. Right? Yes, not a lot of people were traveling to games. Okay, but. It was kind of uh, there was a lot of stats upon uh, why that was there. The, the, all the games were happening on Sundays, right? And it was obviously because of the tours the night football. The um, a lot of traveling support comes from Ireland and up the north as well, right? And people weren't able to travel on Sundays because of work on Monday mornings. And it, it, there was a good percentage of those season tickets that weren't making the trip over. And that's why the reason for that was. Well, and that was down to we were kind of well, in the midst of a recession. Now we're basically in the midst of a recession now. So there is people. People are not going to pay five hundred quid for a season book if for if they can't even a virtual sell book. A, a virtual book. Exactly. But this it's it's just, also I, I, I can see it as a form of protest against the board. I say you didn't do anything for us in the lockdown. You say you didn't listen to us, so you're not getting our money. There's a good point. Yeah, I, I think uh, that there was a uh, that guy got his own flight home. I think he was tested before he went home, and that um, he got his own flight. John Kennedy said something about that today. Um, I'm not completely sure. I thought he said something that they they were away from him, got their own flight home and everything. So, look, whatever truth's behind that, I don't know. But I thought I read something on that today about it. Here we go. Put on the misery. Uh, there's no misery. Nine years of great success. You know, we every every club has it. Every club has a bad season, and that's a fact, Joe, you know. Joe, Joe what's, um, it like to, what's it like to support? What's it like to support a new club? By the way, pal. <laughs> oh, the only great. league title, the only, the only league titles you have is first division, second division, conference, and all that stuff. So. That's it. That's it. Beating playing Barry Rangers in that first first big game. This <laughs> season getting cut short. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that as well, Steve. It's not Duffy, no, because they would have announced it earlier. Duffy would Duffy went to, went home on the Monday. Yeah. Could the league be stopped by this? No, unless the cases go up to Scot like the SFA and then obviously the uh, Scottish government have to have a chat. Uh, hold on a second, like uh, they they stopped it last year and they gave us the title. If they stop this year, they have to give them the title. Ah, oh, I know. And it, it happens, it happens. I don't think null avoid is an option. They don't want to use null avoid. To be honest, I'd really I'd really rather take a null avoid at this stage, let them have the title, just just end the season now because it's hard enough to watch as it is. That's it. Um, let me see anymore. Well, look, I let you go. I'll do the comments on you. Thanks very much for coming on. You want me on tomorrow night? We'll have a chat after uh, the game if the game, if yeah, the game is on. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Hopefully, we can have a little bit of decent stuff to talk about. But yeah, no, uh, I'll give you a buzz tomorrow. And uh, thanks everyone for listening to me as well. And uh, I, I, I promise I'll call about the uh, course for you, Stephen. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Take care Good of night. yourself. Right, folks, that's him. Well, so get the questions and, and I'll go through them as much as I can. Good audience tonight. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate it. As I said, if you subscribe to the channel, it mean a lot to me. Um, I hope he's like the European Cup. You know, it even has Celtic and all on it. You obviously won't be able, I don't know if you'll be able to see Celtic there. The old ribs. Ah, ah, there she is there. There she is there, 1967. It's, it's just a camera. You know, cheap old Amazon camera, you can't complain. 15 quid. Right. Um positive thoughts, lads. Positive thoughts is, you know, at least we're getting a football season. You know, as much as it's been a nightmare, at least we're getting to watch football this season. It's, it's been some horrible results, some average results. You know, it was it was bound to happen. It was bound to happen. Eventually that Celtic we're gonna have. A down season where results weren't going right 
gone right is either getting knocked out of the cups, getting knocked out of Europe, falling in the league. It was going to happen eventually. And you know what? You build, you, you get on with it, you take the criticism, we'll move on, we'll come back stronger next season. Some fans are not giving in to this season, saying it's not over yet, it's still halfway to get you go through to get to get the results, get the points. You have two Glasgow derbies next. Like, I really, to be honest with you, in my mind, our last draw was last Saturday, and I move on from that. Move on from it. it just, we simply haven't been good enough. We simply, we're making amateur mistakes. We're letting players go away to Spain for one day. We're not, we're not feeling the best team. We're putting out players that are well off the pace. The recruitment has been shocking. You know, Yeti has been terrible. Duffy has been terrible as much as I thought Duffy was going to be a good one. Barakas hasn't settled. Alhamma wants to go. Neil Lennon came out and said that the players want some players wanted to go after the final virus game. It just shows the culture of Celtic. It shows that Neil Lennon simply hasn't been up for it. Simply hasn't been up for it. People might say, oh, this and that, defend them. Look at you. His fourth term at the club, brilliant. He came in, steered the ship. Argument's sake is he shouldn't have got, he shouldn't got the, co the contract extension after the travel travel. He should have just went there and then and left. Yes, he got he got nine in a row. Yes, he's got the quad treble. People might argue with that, but the pay, the football, the tactics, the f even the, on the sidelines, we go back to Aberdeen trio, he just was not, he was just sitting down with his arms crossed. People are starting to come out saying Kennedy's the fault. It's a, it's a coaching team, you know. Steve Woods cared he'd be up, you know. Stratton cared he'd be up. This is why these boys are getting paid. It's a coaching self, get in there and show it on the sidelines, show that you actually care because the fans are not there in the stands so the only the only people that have to motivate them players on the pitch is the coaching staff and it hasn't been simply good enough um hibs game will not be will not be cancelled tomorrow they hate the tax dodgers more than us um they will not want ah okay um hibs hibs will want to play the game you know it's from the it's from the, the board up, you know, as I said, the AGM, you go back to that AGM a couple of weeks ago, well, three or four weeks ago, it simply shows that Lawwell does not give a shit about the fans, does not give a shit about he just cares about the money coming in, they're bragging on about thirty million. That money's gonna dry up, you know, it's 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 gonna dry up. They need to when they get into the Champions League automatically next season, whoever for the second place will either play a playoff round or worst case scenario, a third, third round, play, third round playoff, and then into the playoff rounds, we'll have to see. You know, a lot of fans are giving up. I'm not trying to be negative, Nancy. Here, I'm giving you, I'm giving you my opinion. I'm looking at it. Neil Lennon won't walk away from it, um, and you get all these pretenses. Oh, Lennon has to stay. That that portion of the other people, forget about them. You know, they've had, they've had their um, their nine years in the cave. Let them have that moment to shine, but you know what? I'd rather be a depressed team than a happy, um, happy year, you know. Flow from the bottom to the top is to blame. They will dry up when the fans Yeah, as I said, we go back we went back to that conversation there with Michael earlier on. The season books won't be renewed, you know, you'll still get your proper fans that won't miss every game, and that's understandable for a play to them. But you're gonna see the difference around the stadium whenever it's a full whenever the fans are out back at the stadium, wherever it is. Lenny's on 2.5 million. That's what he's meant to be on. You know, I think he's happy just parking the money. I don't think he's... It doesn't, I don't think it meant as much. I think at his first time around, he would have done the job for free. That's how much he loved Celtic then. He still does love Celtic, but it's not. He's, he's, he's mellowed and he's not the Neil Lenny he was. It's a case that Bolton when he left went to Bolton, he was they were on a financial turmoil. His feelings went, he went to Hibs, got Hibs promoted, done well with Hibs, then I went to the shit. You know, there's there's pros and pros and cons about managers and there's only so much you can pick up for this the staff. If if Neil Lennon was the Neil Lennon that we all wanted, he would have called for Johan Mialbi, he would have called for Gary Parks, he would have he would have called for these people to come in. It would have happened. 
that's a huge disconnect between the club and the fans. We need to get back to with the core values of Celtic and rebuild. I've been supporting Celtic in the 80s and 90s. New breed of supporters, drunk on success. Yes, it is drunk. It is down to success because I think it's because Celtic have made the, the benchmark in Scottish football. And it's been a case where losing the title is a massive disappointment massive disappointment because we all know the implications of 10 the row was we all want to 10 the row 10 the row only get you the title only gets you 3.5 million it's a champions league qualification it's the bread and butter that we need the most especially in this pandemic i think a lot of people got i think when the start six and seven i think a lot of people got ahead of us out saying well we're going to win this for the next eight or nine years easily you know and we took teams for granted. We took teams this year for granted. We took Rangers for granted in the last two games. Yes, we were better than Rangers in the four, in the last game for 60 minutes, but we shot ourselves in the foot. Like, we've been shooting ourselves in the foot on and off the pitch. The way we dealt with things, you know, dealt with players going away, players going to the boy, players speaking out on social media. You know, it's there's no, there is a broken connection there, Ollie, definitely broken connection. And... You will see the decline in season books next season until the right person the only way that they're going to get a good capacity and if you get a so-called big name if you can a steering like a similar like a rogers or something which is going to be hurt as i said it's hard to sell a product to people if the morale around the, the building is not good you know especially especially an outside person that doesn't know the concept of celtic you know like people are saying what's his name the guy from cluish the former Cluj manager, people are mentioning him. Some of these players do not care about ten in a row. They only care about moving to down to England. That's I can I can completely agree with you there, Alexander. Completely agree with you there. As I said, the majority of these boys are just you Celtic as a feeder club, and that's how football works. Um, you know, Van Dijk done it, and he it was a success. You know, Wanyama done it, Key done it. Um, Hooper done it. Um, we got good money for these players, but they don't care about ten in a row. It could be a case that majority of them are just fed up. I know it sounds weird. You are they fed up winning? Are they fed up putting in all these sixty games a season and all these competitions? You know that could be paying a toll on them. Starting coming back in July doing pre season training where they can play in England and come back to pre season training. You now they they're coming back in June actually with Celtic. So it's it's really you don't know you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. It's the the training different, completely not the standards that they're happy with. Should they do Roy Kane as much as I don't like Roy Kane? Say that you don't like the training structure, the way he done it. It's Saipan. Taney did it. Taney's doing it. Taney's doing a great job. He's doing a fantastic job at Arsenal. You know, um, we took the money with Tierney as much as people at the time were frustrated at Tierney. Some of the, some of the comments were nasty. I backed Tierney. If he's if he's don't believe me, go into the the videos. You just type in Tierney tribute. You'll see my video talking about Kieran Tierney wishing the very best. His legs are in bits. You know, Tierney might only have two or three years left as a professional because he's he's always struck with injuries, and he was right to take it. You know, as much as he's a Celtic fan, he was at the club from seven up to what. 14 years at the club, he's done his time. At the end of the day, he doesn't have to prove to the supporters. It's a job. It's a job. If you've done your time, you move on. Regardless, it's 10 in a row, you move on. We took, as I said, it didn't cost Celtic nothing to get him. They Celtic could benefit with him gone. As fans, we're hoping because we haven't replaced the left back position of Tierney. We've got Taylor in. Taylor hasn't been up the standards. We've got Laxall in. Laxars, the rumors that Laxars turned a deal down from Al Hayal of seven point three million. Would you pay seven point three million for Al for um, Laxal next season? I don't think the club will. I really don't think they will. I don't think they're brave enough, especially if we're not going to win the league and Champions League qualification is by a tread. I don't think they will, and I think he'd be gone by then. You know, I think he'd be he could be gone by then. The chance is gone. Um. Stay on to midnight. I won't be staying on to midnight. I'm in work tomorrow, comrade. Um, I'll be staying on for another 10 minutes, big time. 10 years of Celtic support, but he's also an athlete. He's also an athlete, and I think he's done his time at the club. He's done his time at the club. He was at the club for 14 years, more than more, 
most of that team. 14 years. So he deserves the praise. He won a treble, treble. You know, played some big European nights. That Man City game was great. You know, we look back to that moment when he's two got smashed out. Got some, got some stitches. Ran up the stairs of Hamden in front of the Aberdeen fans and the piss in the rain and the emotions. He bleeds Celtic. And he's a, he, he, it, told, it was one of the hardest decisions of his life to leave the club. And we benefited from it. 25 million, we benefit. Yes, we're looking at this season and we're saying, did we really benefit from it? We got Bolingoli in, we got Taylor in. Left back was always being dodgy, but it's them type of players are rare. And never say never, we might come back in the future. And he's, I'd welcome back in open arms, you know, Tierney, I loved Tierney. You know, we, it was, Tierney leaving was as bad. It was, it was, to the younger fans, it was like a Larson leaving to them. You know, it, that's what it was like. You know, it was, people were just couldn't get it, couldn't get the grips where he left. But money talks in football, regardless of support or not, it took him time to move on from it. He's a top class one. From PSG. Yeah, we were linked to him in the last window. Um, I love to see him get, I love to see him come. I think he's, he hasn't even played, he's only played like five games for PSG. Um, he was an Ajax youth player. I love to see him come, you know. Yeah, but that's Charlie Nicholas. That's a different generation of football, you know. Charlie Nicholas is just an absolute fud. I don't like Charlie Nicholas, you know. We don't need a management team who knows the club's history. We need, we think. I think we just need to start from scratch. I think we just need to bring people in. That's not sell the connection. All right, that's my honest opinion. I think we should need to bring people in that can just do a job professional way. Don't don't let the, that type of emotions get to them. You know, let them come in the door. Let them see Celtic in a European night. Let them see a Glasgow derby. Let them get blown away by it. Let them get blown away. Let them see then how big Celtic is. You know, that's that's what we need. We need people that can come in like. People are saying to me, Sean, Sean Deutsch. I would take Sean Deutsch at Celtic, not a bother. Why not? Like he's been on a, a shit transfer budget for the last two years at Burnley. He's done well at Burnley. You know, got them into Europe. The team that he had in the especially in the Premier League. So I would take him. I think he's well capable, you know. He looks bring the U trip as well. And we need someone that has belief in bringing the U players through. Rogers done it, Doyle done it, Lennon hasn't really done it. Fair enough, his first time he rang the likes of the U true. I know Tony Watt was signed from injury, but he rang Tony true, you know. Charlie Nicholas and his fourth Charlie Nicholas in his first term at Celtic was phenomenal. Yes, he was. Second term obviously came back, didn't work out well from, you know. Who said the bottom of the championship? Who Where would the Celtic team place in the Premier League this season? That's a great question. To be honest with you, I'd say pff, the way they play this season, it's it, without the fans as well. I'll oh, be, be there. They'd be, they'd be in the relegation. They will be in the relegation as much as I would saying that. They will be. That team would not survive in the Premier League with the, the current squad. We have one or two leaders. That's all we have. So, yeah. So, yep. Gary Holt, Excel to Legends. Right, so throw the questions at me, folks. That's a cheap option. I'd be delighted to never see another Celtic man in charge ever again. I disagree now. You have to. You know, we've, 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 built, we've been built an opportunity. Look at Jock Stein. Jock Stein played for Celtic. Went off, done his trade for Dunfern and Hibs. Won us the European Cup. You can't, I disagree with that, you know. Disagree with that, you know. Neil Lennon played for Celtic. First time, what did he do? Come back. Won leagues, you know. So, Billy McNeil played for Celtic. Won leagues as a manager, you know. What about Marquios? Marquios, Sparky, I would take Sparky Celtic, but it's given them the financial backing. That's the thing. You know, Marquios has worked, worked and got some good jobs in England, Man City, um, Southampton, and other Celtic standards. 
um blackburn it was a stoke he worked at as well um I'm trying to think what else he worked he worked in the wales job as well you know obviously experience playing for the likes of manchester united as well and it's a different era of football but big clubs big clubs i would give it to him i really would so I, I, why not like but i don't think he would take it i know he's been ring, linked in the past i just think we need to get away from the whole celtic connection thing of it just for the next for the next rebuilding structure of it that's my opinion i think we need to stay away get away from it people are saying bring larson back no don't bring larson back because it ruins his legacy if it goes wrong you know I worry if the fans are back in the stadium, Celtic fans are boycott buying the season ticket books. Well, some fans won't. Some fans won't believe that, and some fans will stick by their, their club regardless. They're not going to let one trophy ruin supporting Celtic. And I wouldn't let one trophy ruin supporting Celtic. If I had an opportunity to see, go and see Celtic play next season, I would. I really would. I wouldn't. I'd. I'd forget about last season. I'd move on to next season. You know, it's it's a transitional period. You move on. You back your team. You know, you see in the NFL all the time when teams get crashed out, they don't even make the playoffs, and it, and you know, it's a new new rain comes in. You back your team. You back your team. As people came on of coming tonight, saying eighties and nineties. Yeah, some people are spoiled by success. You move on from it. You move on. You move on from the mistakes, and you and you aim to the future you build it's all you do you know you build is it the worst Celtic team we've seen in the last 10 years yes it has been the worst Celtic team because it's been there hasn't been consistency it's on and off the pitch it's just been an absolute laughing show it's been a laughing show it's been banter years it's been an absolute disgrace european failure in champions league early hurdle getting smashed in the group, getting beaten by Rangers on two occasions. The first occasion were a terrible, second occasion, our own fault. Um, just dropping points away at Rugby Park. Easter Road's a tough place to go. We always can never be Hibs at Easter Road. It's always a tough place in the league. Aberdeen, it's just been an absolute... It has been the worst sell team we're playing. The reason why is because the majority of the players don't care. They don't care about the concept of 10 in a row. They're all on their, on their Thomas Cook. They're all on their trans. They're all on their agents looking for him to move away because maybe you don't believe that Neil Lennon is even near the level as a manager that they want, and that's what I think it is. I wouldn't spend seven million on Axel, no, because he's wage demand. I wouldn't. What's the point? What is the point? Because what's the point of spending seven million on Axel and we get a manager in the next season and he's not happy with the manager? He's not, he doesn't suit the manager's play. He has a big huff, has a moan, and we sell him in January. We don't get much of the value of him that we, we thought we would. I wouldn't. I think he's a good player. Yes, but I still think he gives away a lot of free, a lot of fouls. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, no. I think this, we, could, we could go cheap and get in a cheaper option, especially in the English leagues. Or Scandinavian League or something. You know. We will always support Celtic win or lose, but not always support the management of the board. Yes. Yes. And I know a lot of people will say, well, if you're giving money to the season, you give money for a season book, that means you're giving money to the bars and they're not doing much power investing in the, the squad. And it's still a bad example. All I can say is all I could say is just take every game as it comes for the rest of the season. Things might change. There's a chance, there's a glimpse of hope that it could change. And the board won't change. I think the board have decided, you know, they've fleeced the fans this season. I really think they've fleeced the fans as much as I hate saying that. Um, if they came out and presented themselves better, we, they have a YouTube channel, they have television, they have. You know, they have all this capacity to come out and speak out to the fans, to communicate with the fans. As I said, the AGM was an absolute shambles. Not enough. Not enough has been done to give the, the fans their opinion. 
and there was split. And I don't agree with the violence that was shown after the Ross County game, but the Celtics supporters trust done it in a really good way the last time, the Camara game. Outstanding, absolutely outstanding the way they done the protest. Hands up to them, absolutely brilliant. And that's the way it should be conducted. Peaceful protest and the way they, they back the team, but they, they want the board out. And they're right. They're completely right. Completely. The, the, the fans do deserve power and 100% because the fans are not in the stadium and they're not getting their voice opinion across, you know. And you can say to yourself, would it would it be a case that would this, this happen if the fans were in the stadium? Would you think cars would be thrown at Neil Lennon? There'd be police presence around that where the, the board are sitting, you know. You, you really don't know. You really don't know. And I don't think we're that bad of a club to go that level. I don't think we, we shouldn't be. You know, we've been... We've got nine fabulous years, but at the club, the board have been shooting this on themselves. They're putting claim marks down and making it worse and worse, you know. I wouldn't say they've been robbing us for years because we've um, just been invested. There's been investment in the club, like you know, just there was 18 million spent in the calendar, the calendar year. It's just it hasn't hasn't worked out. The players, the players, the recruitment's been terrible, but the price, the money has been there. You know, and people would have argued and said, well, we didn't spend that well in the last window. We spent very well. Just the players weren't great, weren't up the standards, you know. Like we, some fans asked for Duffy, we got Duffy. Some fans asked for the keeper. You wanted Fraser Foster, we didn't get Fraser Foster. We were looking at Barkas, we wanted Barkas, we got Barkas. Barkas hasn't been great. People are asking Mohamed El Nusi to come back, we got Mohamed El Nusi. You know, it just hasn't worked out for us. And I walk on it, as I said this in many shows, and I'll say this again, I'm not going to let the season ruin Jeff to support Celtic long term. It's only a bad season. Every club has a bad season, you know. The positive is, when this is over, we'll get a new manager, a new manager, and to be re restructure. There's always light, always light. Will Forrest come back and make a big enough com um, big enough impact? I say so. Forrest has been missing, and I think he's a player that we do need to strive with. As much as he has bad games and phenomenal games, he has bailed us out many times. And I like James Forrest. He's been a, a part of our furniture for the last 10 years, helping us win titles with assists and goals, contribution. Very underrated, you know, and I felt he's very underrated by clubs that ever looking at him. Tottenham was the only club that ever wanted to get him. In his 10 years, absolutely shocking. Lennon has been true more than any other manager in, in the club in the history of Scottish football. The board always seemed to be to be stumbling block. Yet yeah, it is a case that it's because he's been there, he's 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 had the experience in his first term with death threats. Having shot with the referees, criticized for the referee stuff. Um, people would have said he's not mature enough in his force, but we loved that's what sold Neil Lennon to the fans. His hunger, his thunder, the way he was in the sidelines for your Neil Lennon. That's what we wanted. And when we when he came back the second time around, he he showed a glimpse that he had that in him. Look at when we we beat Hearts in Tynecastle, twenty four hours after he came back, the Neil Lennon. You know that stuff. Like that's what we want. You know. Lee hasn't shown it. He's past it now. Well past it. We need we we need someone that has more experience than Neil Lennon. And it's gonna be hard to get. It's gonna be hard to sell the tail to someone. You know, money will talk, but will the squad will the squad talk? Because it's gonna be a massive shuffle, massive clear out. Personally, I think ten year has gone. Um, I think we have. Bring your management in. I think they need to look at management now. I think they need to look and get communication levels and say, look, okay, right, you're taking the job at the end of May. Tell me who you want in May. Your ideas in. Get it all planned ahead before that person walks in. So we hit the ground running. We have players built in. We know who we're, we know. Have these have these Zoom call meetings. Have start getting start keeping players whoever you need to keep next season. Make a deal with them. If if Ayer doesn't want to be there, 
Edward doesn't want to be there, let them go. But get players that actually want to play for the short, you know. That's what you do. You, you think ahead of the game. Obviously, they will employ it. Do your Zoom calls, do whatever. Meet these players. Meet the likes of Callum McGregor, James Forrest, Taylor. Players that are going to be there. Tumble. Build, build a squad around these players that actually want to win, you know. Sorrow. Griffiths has one year left after his contract next season. So, yeah. Hazard. You know, ask them who would who would they think would be a good addition. Look what Ronnie Doyle have done. Johansson came in. My Stefan Johansson, Neil Lennon studied so I Stefan Johansson. Then Johansson suggested Ronnie Doyle to the club, you know. As much as Ronnie came in, won two titles in a league cup, still done the job. He still got us that um that four and five. Lenny won't be there next season. He won't be there. Slava and Belidic, oh, I'd give him a go. I really would. You know, people are like, nah, nah. You got, you got West Brom promoted from one of the hardest leagues in the world. I'll get, I'd give him, I'd give him a go. And it's a hard, it's a harder league than the, in the Scottish league. He's done well with Croatia in the past as well with their national team. Done well in the Euros. He has experience there. Fair enough. Didn't really work out well at West Ham. I like Blitich. I really do like Blitich. I think he was... still think he should have been... His, his work in Croatia was absolutely great. You know? We should be looking at more successful foreign managers who are ready to step up bigger club. Yeah, we should be. Paresco has been one of the ones that have been linked. I would look at Thomas Frank. Thomas Frank for Brentford. I think he's a good manager. Um, there's a few of them. There's really a few. People are saying... People are saying Martinez, like Roberto Martinez, I'm not going to come to Celtic. I really don't think he, they'll have the budget to get, get attract him. I really don't think it. Um, happy birthday to Boyo as well, by the way, folks. Boyo's birthday today. He's on loan at the moment at Toulouse. Anyways, I'm going to leave it there, folks. I'm going to leave it there. It was um, nice speaking to us all tonight. I really appreciate it. We had, a, we had a good, productive conversation. Thanks very much for coming on, watching me for the last hour and 20 minutes. Being very good. Um, I'll be back tomorrow night. Back tomorrow. Terry just literally missed me. I'll be back tomorrow night. Um, really good audience tonight. Thank you very much, whoever's watched. If it's green, if it's blue, it's all a bit of banter. It's all a bit of banter, you know. I complete. I really appreciate it. As I said, if you subscribe to the channel, really appreciate. It. And behind me, there's the platforms as well. So just remember, I'd rather be a, a sad Celtic fan than a happy Jay, because if you're one of these, one of these. So yeah, it's great seeing. Can't see, I can't see their name on it. I can even see, I can even see even Stella Bucharest's name on it. You know, you can see Chelsea's name on it. You know, some great elite clubs there. P even even Hamburg's names on it. For God's sake, as much as I don't like them, we all don't like Hamburg. So yeah, tomorrow tomorrow night I'll be back. I'll be back with probably Gary and I'll be back with Michael as well. So. Fingers crossed we have a game on tomorrow. Fingers crossed, you know. So yeah, we'll see what we'll see what the crack is. We'll see what the crack is. Good night. Take care of yourselves. All the very best.